Okay, hello everyone. Thanks for joining the ranking session. My name is Xu Yang Wu, the current PhD student from Santa Clara University. So in the next 15 minutes, I will present our recent work, a multi-task learning framework for product ranking with BERT, which cooperated with the Worma searching team. Hope you glad with this topic. Well, for the for this topic, firstly, I will introduce the overview about our potential researching problems. After that, I will present the architecture of our multitask learning for product ranking framework and uh, explain the detail of each stage in the framework with the formulation. And later, I will show the overall experimental results to demonstrate our model with the best performance than the competitive baseline models. I also will give some ablation study results to prove the efficiency of our model. Uh, at the end, I will give the conclusion and some potential further works. So online shopping have now become an integral part of people's daily life. With an ever-increasing catalog size, product searching systems have been playing a crucial role in serving customers shopping on online e-commerce system. So for example, in this diagram, Consumer could find uh, what they want through the searching query. The e-commerce platform need to understand the intent of user by the query and return the relevant items. Based on the results, user could decide to click the item for more details and buy it or give up. Usually, users are more likely to click the top relevant items. So the product ranking system should be indispensable part in e-commerce platform. And the product ranking system could optimize the ranking order based on the user engagement data, such as the click, add to cart, and the purchase. However, it still have some challenge within the product ranking. For example, the vocabulary missing matching between query and the products, the variables the engagement signals, and uh, they also have the data sparsity problem. In this paper, uh, in this work, we tackle the above challenge by processing a multi-task learning framework for product ranking with BERT, which utilizes the domain-specific BERT with fine-tuning to bridge the vocabulary gap and the multi-task learning approach to organize multi-object simultaneously, such as the click, add to cart, and purchase. So in this project, we present a novel multi-task learning framework for product ranking. Uh, short for MLPR, based on neural information retrieval. And uh, it integrates semantic match between uh, with the traditional ranking feature in end-to-end -end learning manner. To our best knowledge, it is the first model that utilizes multitask learning with BERT for product ranking. Uh, in these slides, I will introduce the architecture of our framework from the bottom to the top. In the diagram, the architecture could divide into four main stages. The first is the deep wide feature generation stage, creates the input feature based on the raw data. The deep feature includes the query embedding, product embedding, and the interactions between them. Embedding are generated by domain specific expert from the text fields. So, and the, on the right side, the web feature directly comes from the product production set ranking features, which are the traditional feature used in learning to rank. The next stage is the two-stage attraction network designed as a shared bottom structure, which can learn common knowledge from different tasks. We propose two stages in the attraction network, which is not uh, uh, fully separated in the early stage, but separated progressively in upper stage. Each expert's network using a simple multi-layer feed-forward network with batch normalization and the ReLU activation function. The gating network is designed as a single-layer feed-forward network with the softmax activation function. For the multi-experts with shared gating control this stage, the model will consider the relevance and the difference of each task. The gating network will select a efficiency, uh, information shared, and joint learning, combined knowledge from each expert. For specific experts with customer gating control, 
the task specifics experts affected by the corresponding task to avoid uh, a harmful parameter interference. The next one is the attention units and the tower network, which build upon the output of the extraction networks. They generate the output for the corresponding task. The attention units learn more task-driven confidential information within the tower network, which could adaptively transfer help for information from the former works. The next one is the probability transfer, which according to the conditional probability rules defined on the user behavior graph. So transfer simple probability information via the scalar product. Then the final output of the model could calculate the predicted probability based on the user behavior graph that uh, impression to click and to add to cart and to purchase. And uh, if you see the model actually compare with the attention units and uh, also the mixed expert strategy in the extraction network. So mixed experts at the bottom stage could transfer shallow representations among tasks, but it's not uh, separately designed for task with uh, you know, the sequential dependencies as the uh, click add to current conversion. Also in the network close to the output layer, it often contains richer and more useful representations. So we think uh, the attention unit can bring more gains. In next slide, two slides, I will give more details for each stage with each stage with the uh, formulation. So for the deep and wide feature generation stage, we can count the query embedding, enter embedding, and also their interactions like the handmade product or maybe the um, uh, similarities. And also this is the ranking features. So after that, we have two stage extraction network. So in these two network, actually, the E case represents the experts network. The WK here, which is uh, in other words, it's a waiting function. So it will use the gating network and uh, could decide how many information learning from each experts. So the difference between these two stage with, uh, is that within the specific experts, uh, each task has their own specific at birth before the gating network. So if you see here, actually we have the shared experts. We also have the task specific experts. This two to connect together and sending to the gating network. So in this layer, the parameters in this stage will more focus on their own tasks. So after the extracting network, so each tower network will take the corresponding gating network's output. So we're using the tower network, like the, using the feed forward network to design the tower network. And we also use the attention units. So in our paper, actually we're only using the simple one like self-attention, but you also can using other advanced attention mechanism to replace that. And then we we get, we're using a sigmoid function to get the logic. So as our object task is a sequential task, we introduce the probability transfer mechanism, which is defined on the user behavior graph, uh, like the impression to click and click to add to cart and to purchase. So it's meaning uh, if you want to get the predict, uh, get the probability of the add to cart, actually you need to, it's the conditional probability based on the click. And if you want to get the probability of purchase, actually it's a conditional probability based on the add to cart and the click. And after that, because we have two, three different laws, so we're using, we're using a certain loss to optimize the final loss. So um, in this loss, actually the sigma one, sigma two, and the sigma three is, uh, is the corresponding noisy parameters and can balance the task specific losses. So from these slides, I will introduce our experiments. So the e-commerce data site was collected from the warma.com during one continuous month, which contains the user queries and also the corresponding product in the searching results. And each query item pair 
have the user engagement data, such as the number of clicks, add to cart, and the purchase. Then we divide the data into three different data sets, the training validation and test, with a percentage of 80%, 10%, and 10%, respectively. And for the evaluation metrics, we use the AUC to evaluate our model prediction performance and use the NDCG to evaluate our model ranking quality. In this page, I will show the overall uh, results of our experiments. By the Walmart data set privacy policy, we cannot show the absolute value of each matrix. All the um, experimental results show the percentage lift over the actual boost baseline models. And from the table, we can find that the first is the all the model, you, you see here the all the model actually the deep learning based models. All the models actually use better results than the traditional actual boost methods, indicating the advantages of the neural methods in utilizing a large amount of data for model training. And also if you compare with the uh, uh, ML MLP single and MLP multitask learning, multitask learning achieve better results in most of the metrics, which indicates the effectiveness of a multitask learning approach in transferring knowledge between different tasks. And uh, based on the experts' bottom-based uh, structure, like the MMOE and the PRE, MMOE only controls the shared knowledge among different tasks results even worse than multitask learning model, uh, uh, MLP multitask learning model. A uh, PRE model with a specific experts layer could improve significantly by transferring the shared information and the task specific knowledge among various tasks. ESM square and the AITM model optimize the performance in the upper level of the model structure. Attention units could uh, uh, obtain more gains by the sequential depending, dependence task than the simple probability transfer learning structure. So above all, our proposed MLPR model obtains significant improvement compared to various state-of-art baseline models. The ability study shows the effect of the different uh, component and the stage of the MLPR model. First, let's focus on the domain specific spurs with fine tuning. With the fine tuning of the domain specific spurt with the downstreaming multitask learning, it has significant improvement on each prediction task, either with the basic uh, MLP multitask learning model or our model. You can see the AUC gain and uh, the NDCG gain which reports the percentage lift for fine-tuning over without fine-tuning. Also, the example shows that the BERT-based method could bridge the vocabulary gap in our model as we expected. You see the results from the XG boost only shows that a lack of matching between the query and the product title, but this item was not relevant at all. The results from, the results from our model shows that no matter product, the title did not have as much lexical overlap with the given query, but it was semantically relevant to the query. In order to understand the performance of each stage of our framework, we investigating the individual component of the MLPR model by incrementally adding a new component to the base multitask learning model. As we can see, the specific experts could actual more confidential information than the simple shared bottom design. As the specific expert stage, not only actual the you know a common knowledge from different tasks, but also learn the specific information for each individual tasks, so they can fine tune that part's parameters. Attention units and the probability transfer demonstrate that the upper level design have a good improvement over the baseline models. With the fine tuning process, the model gains the best results and learn valuable information from the test fields, which demonstrates the effectiveness of using the fine tuned BERT for product ranking. To understanding the efficiency of MLPR in inference, we conduct an analysis on latency by experimenting with four models. 
The latency metrics measure from the time the model received the query to the time it returned the ranking list of 100 products. The experimental results demonstrated the efficiency of proposed multitask learning with the pre-computing strategy. Above all, from this project, we proposed a novel multitask learning framework for product ranking by integrating multi-type of engagement signals. And it's a flexible configuration. You know, in the model, each component can be replaced or removed. And in the future, we want to integrate other type of input data into the model, such as uh, like the product image and others. In addition, we want to apply the proposed framework to other searching and ranking tasks. So this page just uh, listing some most important, uh, for example, the baseline papers which are using. And uh, thank you for your listening. And uh, any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? I cannot see any questions on chat. If you want to ask a question, please unmute yourself within a few seconds. Otherwise, I have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. OK, so let me actually ask you uh, this question. So you have three components, right? So the first component, where you extract features from both text and also these normalized features. As far as I understand, your contribution, um, I mean, you want to extract, uh, you're doing re-ranking, right? When you do re-ranking, is there a reason why you use a two-tower model, uh, query embedding and an item embedding? So usually in re-ranking, people do not use a two-tower model. Yeah, for, uh, you, you you mean the the for for the for the deep one well the feature generation layer for the text part for the text part uh, yeah yeah typically yeah. what people do is they concatenate queries and documents during re-ranking for retrieval yeah. they use these two tire models but for re-ranking they use uh, cross uh, joint attention model yeah uh, I, I think uh, the first is actually for this part of the BERT uh, is uh, the first the BERT is from the pre-training model. And for, for pre-training bird. So for this pre-training bird actually is the Walmart based on their own ranking data to generate it. And then based on this model, actually, we we using the query text, for example, choosing some of the, the category information, the query text, and also for the atom part, we have the like the categories and the title and any other text information and sending to the, the bird and then it gets the embeddings. And uh, so, so after this model, actually fine-tuning the BERT, the BERT actually is the same, yeah. The okay, same so model. You're, uh, you're not using multiple text features here, so it makes sense to encode them separately um, as compared to the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, this two BERT is the same, yeah. OK. OK, so the second question uh, maybe is, um, how, uh, what is really the impact of this expert gating, right? So this is the most important part. Otherwise yeah. you could just use the features from the feature extractor directly to this, um, you have this probability transfer uh, part, right? So what is really the impact of this gating mixture of experts? Uh, the first is like, uh, you know, if you see this stage, for this stage, actually the expert, if you see this diagram, actually for each gating, they will aggregate all the experts information. So it's like, uh, as my understanding for these experts, they try to, after this stage, the, a lot of the common information or features is learned. But, uh, you know, for example, if this is a sequential task, actually they, own, they should have some, maybe the layer, they can try to learn something only for them tasks. So this is why I have the second stage. For this stage, if you see the gating, they only have two uh, input. Uh, so it's like before the gating, we can kind of the shared experts. So it's like the common information, but we also have the, the, share, the, the specific experts. So it's like for after this gating information, actually this layer, we are learning some parameter only for casting their own tasks. So this is why I think this layer is most very useful. But this is this layer also learns some the you know the common information. Yeah, not like you know the previous the hard parameter sharing. So so it's like each channel learns some useful information as well. Yeah. 